friends, we uh, discuss Bernard Shaw as a playwright uh, in, under the series uh, called uh, Modern Drama and uh, <coughs> uh, we uh, uh, say uh, one or two things to uh, enter the argument regarding the play that we have to discuss that that play is uh, uh, Major Bavra. So uh, let me begin with the statement, Shaw became the force behind the newly founded Fabian Society, a middle class socialist group that aimed at the transformation of English society not through revolution but through permeation in Sidney Webb's term of the country's intellectual and political life. Now this is important. You know, I, I, I said uh, uh, previously that Bernard Shaw was a socialist and he would propagate uh, socialist ideas but then his socialism was somewhat different from uh, what can be called Marxist socialism. Marx, he was, he was Marx's contemporary initially. Marx died in 1880 and uh, Marx was born in the early part of the 19th century. So, for a long time, Bernard Shaw would have been reading Karl Marx also, uh, but you know, he seemed to differ with his uh, view of socialism and uh, he, he was basically a socialist who would talk and take ideas to the masses and who would not talk about revolution. Revolution means that uh, the people who are above, they go below and those who are below, they go, ab they, they, they go above and uh, when the uh, workers who are below start, uh, you know, uh, ruling the country, then they bring about what is called social equality. That is Marxist socialism. But this person said, uh, Bernard Shaw, that he is not a Marxist socialist, he is a Fabian socialist and uh, Fabius is a figure, a historical figure in the ancient times and uh, this person called Fabius, he believed in discussion and uh, quietly working towards one's goal. So therefore the word used here is permeation. Uh, quietly you enter into the domain of uh, ideas and you turn, you know, people against their own views. This is called, uh, you know, uh, Fabian socialism and uh, the <coughs> there was a thinker in the 19th century called Sidney Webb and of course his wife also, the two worked together, Beatrice Webb and they founded a different uh, uh, school of thought called Fabian Socialism and Bernard Shaw seemed to be closer to it. That's why uh, I say that Bernard Shaw wrote more and more. He, he would write uh, plays, he would write prefaces, he would, he, he would write whole books on uh, ideas because he wanted to permeate he wanted to enter quietly the, the uh, consciousness of the people of the country. So I repeat this, uh, through permeation he wants to, uh, you know, uh, um, change uh, country's political and intellectual life. Then, you know, we uh, straight away now shift to Major Barbara, the, 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 the play that uh, is at the center of our discussion. Uh, in Major Barbara, performed 1905, Shaw was, Shaw has his heroine, a major in the Salvation Army. So there is a, there is a, a kind of a social army called Salvation Army. Salvation is a Christian word. Uh, so you are working for salvation. You are freeing society from the clutches of, uh, you know, the uh, rich people, and uh, you you are spreading a kind of uh, you know religious uh, and uh, uh, slightly peaceful uh, you know idea. Uh, of, of loving people and fighting through love, religious love. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, if there is a bad person, if, they, if there is a villainous person in your midst, then you try to change his heart and win his soul. That is what uh, w uh, is the purpose of Salvation Army. And uh, uh, there, there is a, there's an, uh, this, this kind of an army, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the blessings of uh, Christianity in the country uh, is being run. And uh, uh, because it's an army, of, of, of fighters for justice and it's an army of love it, it is uh, changing you know the hearts of people and winning their soul as I say therefore uh, Barbara has been made its major why is she a major because major is an important position uh, in, in, in an army formation and uh, she is a big shot there uh, uh, even before I uh, you know uh, discuss this play let me tell you that uh, she would have been made a major in the army uh, not because she knew more than others or she was more uh, honest or insincere than other workers in, 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 in the Salvation Army, but because she was the daughter of a rich person. So, you know, everywhere, whether it's religion, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, social standing, whether it's an institution, 
uh, you know, where uh, people are supposed to uh, run certain institutions uh, with uh, ideas and principles, the uh, upper posts are always offered to the uh, children of the rich, maybe uh, because she is uh, definitely uh, a person from a very rich family and that's why call, she is called the Major Bhavara and uh, her age is very, very, I mean she is just 20 years when, when she is in the play and uh, the play is about a few uh, weeks uh, of Major Bhavara in, in her 20s. So, uh, Shaw has this heroine and uh, she is a major in the army and uh, she f discovers in the course of the play that his principles and practice, however, unorthodox are religious in the highest sense. Uh, I am talking about Shaw, the, 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 that Shaw at that point of time uh, presents a point of view which is religion, uh, which is religious in nature and in the highest sense of the word. Uh, while those of the Salvation Army require the hypocrisies of often false public confession and the donations of the distillers and the armorers against which it invades. Now, this, this is one point that Salvation Army actually is uh, sponsored by the rich people in society. Why do the uh, rich people uh, uh, sponsor uh, such armies, you know, which will uh, uh, create a sense of peace in society and, and, and uh, you know, uh, spread the idea of love? This is a question that Bernard Shaw is posing and very, uh, uh, within quotes, devilishly he is pos posing this question. That is because the rich people want to take the attention of people away from the actual inequalities. And uh, there, is, there is one way uh, is to suppress the, uh, you know, ordinary uh, poor people uh, violently uh, with the help of the police and army. That is one way. The other way is that you send preachers, religious preachers there who would say, well, you should love your pain, you should love your uh, poverty. Uh, you, you are very near your God, you know, when you are poor. So, remain poor, enjoy poverty. So, poverty becomes the principle of, of, of uh, an institution or, a, or, a, or an army called the Salvation Army. And uh, if you love your poverty, if I love my poverty, then I will not raise my voice against the, uh, you know, the, the economically rich and socially powerful. So, society is very happy. Uh, the, the, uh, run by the, the rich people uh, in, in life. Uh, uh, society is very happy that such, a, such an army exists because this army actually is no threat to the uh, power of the uh, uh, people above. So, those of the Salvation Army uh, uh, and that makes the Salvation Army members hypocrites because they say one thing and uh, do the opposite. They all come from, they, they all take their money from the rich people and they are uh, spreading false principles among the poor. And this kind of hypocrisy can be sustained by uh, certain young people who actually believe in these wrong ideas. So, uh, uh, th there is a false so public confession. Uh, you, you can just go to, uh, you know, a poor person and say, uh, become a Christian uh, in, in, in Ireland and England and uh, become uh, a true follower of Christ and, and love the rich people. Uh, tell them that, you know, that they should be uh, nice and kind to you and they will finally understand the message and they will they'll also turn good Christians. And uh, then, you know, in, in the evening when uh, the, these uh, uh, people, members of the army, they go back home and they are from middle class or, or from other, other places and they are mostly women. Then, you know, uh, a kind of hypocrisy is being maintained in society, double standards that, you know, you are rich and you are uh, uh, sponsoring, you, you, you are, uh, you know, uh, financing uh, these institutions where young people are spreading the message of peace, message of harmony and that peace and harmony actually is needed by the rich because if uh, the poor people are, are peaceful and harmonious uh, in, in their understanding, then they will not rise in revolt against them. So, the last word is uh, in, in, in the quotation that I am giving you that uh, they are run by the donations of the distillers, distillers are actually the, the makers of drinks, make makers of liquor and the armorers, those who are producing arms. So, these people are actually sponsoring the, uh, the, the uh, Salvation Army and uh, things like that. And imagine hypocrisy is that um, Christians do not believe in an army, they, they believe in only lovers, lovers of humanity. But then they call themselves an army because they are together in, in spreading uh, a kind of a message of peace and harmony in the world and a world which is divided at its roots. 
So I take this quotation and, and I, I want you to uh, you know uh, pick it up properly, uh, look at the words used here. Uh, the word salvation itself is ironical. It doesn't mean that way which, which is supposed to mean the words ironical. You can't take it, you can't take it seriously. And uh, people working in the Salvation Army are taking it seriously. They, they, are, they are very, uh, one of the girls, you know, who is working, they are a, a kind of volunteer. Uh, she is only 18 years and she doesn't understand that uh, religion actually is very, very wrong and uh, uh, is, is giving a wrong message to, to people. She doesn't understand. So she has tears in her eyes and she says, imagine the, the, the rich people are so very nice and uh, she starts crying and all those things. And uh, le, le, let's now buy their souls. So rich people would be very happy to sell their souls to them. And, and, and uh, then you go to the poor people and you buy their souls also. And finally, in your mind, in your understanding, in your scheme, you make a community of uh, you know, people who are close to Christ himself. So that's the kind of message that Salvation Army gives. And uh, the play uh, is uh, in its uh, uh, organizational essence uh, under the theme is managed by Major Barbara, the young woman who is active through this institution. <coughs> then the themes, concerns, characters, the class angle, wit, social criticism. All these of, of, uh, are to be kept in mind while discussing this play. Themes, what are the themes? The themes are uh, hypocritically uh, telling people that love is the answer to all the problems. That is the theme. Do people believe in it? Those who say it? No. They do not believe in it. They take it as a kind of uh, practice, as a, as a kind of uh, you know taking money and using that money in order to spread the message of Christianity. And uh, that is the theme. And um, the theme is comic. The theme is not serious because nobody is serious about the divisions in society. They, they are forming a group and they, they are getting donations from people. Then, then they, uh, you know, uh, from morning till evening, they are, uh, uh, you know, uh, bringing out processions uh, with, with flags, with, with, with drums and with other, you know, musical instruments and they are singing songs of love and they think that the society is changing according to their, 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 their plans. So, uh, the theme is actually the hypocritical theme of changing society uh, at the religious level. Concerns. Concerns also are false concerns. Concerns are to convert people uh, from the, the uh, from from poverty, from 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 anger, uh, from from dissatisfaction to love. That's the concern. Characters now. Characters are very interesting. Uh, you know, uh, you just cannot say that a poor person uh, can be made finally to to uh, to fall in the trap of uh, uh, Christianity this way. That you know, he he'll become a good person and that he will leave his uh, anger. He and he will leave his criticism and he will start. You know. Uh, hugging and you know embracing uh, all people as his brothers and sisters that's not going to happen so when uh, people actual people who are crude uh, who, who also can fight most of the poor people are very crude and and, and, and they fight very well and uh, they are here uh, you know shown to be uh, you know kind people and they have to be kind because uh, uh, they are hungry and they, they get some bread and they, they, they get some milk uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, sisters in the society that, uh, that, that they enter. So, they uh, quietly accept the bread, they, they also accept uh, milk from there. Now, one important, one uh, comic thing that Varnal Shaw does here is that he uh, shows people uh, in the army, in the, in the Salvation Army, in, in the, uh, the volunteers who are working in the army, he shows those people uh, adding, you know, water to milk and then, you know, give that milk to the poor people. And why do they do so? They are doing it innocently. The, the, the funds are less. They, they cannot buy good milk, pure, pure milk, you know, from there. Because they don't have money enough. But they have to feed the, uh, you know, hungry people, the starving people on the road. So they get them from there and they start giving them cups which are full of uh, milk mixed with water. And sometimes, you know, the, the water is so much and the milk is so less in this that it starts looking blue. And, uh, and, 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 and they simply say uh, that, that, that this is the blue thing that, that, that they are giving. So, uh, the, uh, what, what they call milk is sky blue. Uh, can you imagine that uh, milk by mixing with water can become a sky blue in color? 
and 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 uh, Bernard Shaw is not explaining what is sky blue. In fact, when I read the play first many years ago, then I had to go to the notes where it said that he is talking about milk. That there is so much of water in it that the milk has turned blue. So sky blue. So this this kind of a thing and uh, this hypocrisy, Bernard Shaw is making fun of, and uh, very sharply because uh, pe- people in religion will not be happy to watch such a play. That uh, where you know the the the, uh, the the crooks are running the show from 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 behind the scene, uh, the or the ordinary workers in 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 the Salvation Army are are normal people, and they are mostly women and 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 they are sweet women and and they have good manners and sometimes they are hit by by the poor people in 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 the shed where they work from, and uh, they, they are, when somebody says why why uh, why do you accept this hitting, then then the women say no no actually. Uh, these people just don't know what they are doing, and uh, we'll uh, love them, and we'll tell them, cajole them, uh, we'll give them sweet talk, and then they will change their ways, and then they'll start following us. So this is the kind of play that that it is, and it's a really very funny. It's really very sharp. It is ironical, and Bernard Shaw actually is also suppressing his anger in his in his humor. So I don't say that Bernard Shaw uh, is is uh, spreading uh, any entertainment here. He is only ridiculing. The sentimentality of people who are working in the uh, Salvation Army, and at the head of uh, these sentimental people, is a major called Major Barbara. So, uh, my uh, explanation to you regarding themes and concerns, I would have already told you. I would have already suggested to you that Bernard Shaw actually is using wit uh, to good effect. So this this wit is there when, when a person is telling a lie when a, and when a person uh, you know understands that he is telling the truth but actually he, it's a lie then you know this is called wit and uh, this wit is of the ironical kind that the person himself herself does not know that that, that this is wrong therefore you are, you are telling it uh, with, with, with good faith and when you do do it in good faith then you know it becomes ironical it, it starts giving the opposite message which means that. The people working in the volunteers, uh, working in the uh, uh, Salvation Army, the Army of, of, of Christ, the Army of, of, of Religion, uh, these uh, they are not taken seriously by, by by the hungry people who come and and eat their bread. They, they also say, well, they are fools and they, they are just uh, spreading a wrong message. But then the whole thing is ironical. So uh, I would say that uh, from behind the scene, it can it, it can be uh, it can be viewed as it can be uh, you know interpreted as social criticism. It is social criticism. The answer to divisions in society, the answer to poverty in society, is not that you you uh, you you take you know palliative measures that 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 you just start feeding people and uh, feed them. Uh, no, not exactly. Well, you can't feed them. The, the money is involved here and. Uh, these people have very little money, and yet you know uh, these people are there in order to spread the message of harmony and peace. So all work towards a deeply comic and critical point of view and posing intellectual social questions. So once you read this play, uh, you you will definitely talk about this play uh, uh, with your friends, with, with with other people in the neighborhood, and say that uh, so much uh, humbug. Uh, so, so, so much, you know, false uh, propaganda is being done by institutions like the Salvation Army, and actually, uh, they, they are being financed by, they are being patronized by the rich people from behind the scene. So, when you, when you say that, then, then obviously, uh, the, the, the opposite effect than, than the one that that uh, Bernard Shaw, uh, you know, wants to make is there. The place of the first act is Lady Britomart under Shaft's house. And uh, let us consider the main characters in the play there. So actually I, I thought that uh, instead of uh, telling you the meaning of this play, because meaning is quite simple, uh, and the, the fun lies, the, the art lies, the, the power of the play lies in the way the characters are presented. Because there Bernard Shaw is at his dramatic best. For instance, there is a lady here in, in the play called Lady Britomart under Shaft. She is the wife of under Shaft. And her own name is Britta Mart, and she is a lady. She has to run a house, and uh, she understands very high of herself. She doesn't live with her husband because the husband doesn't agree with her. So she has driven him out. She she would not talk to him, 
and he is coming here uh, to, so far as the play is concerned uh, in, uh, in the first scene he is coming for after a long time uh, you know to, to meet her uh, and and uh, will will discuss the future of his children with with his wife he is not married again lady bitmar also did not marry but she had three children from him a son and two daughters and uh, she has lived alone but now she wants to talk to her husband because he is very rich he is an industrialist and he is producing arms he has an arms factory there and this arm fa- arms factory and bernard shaw being bernard shaw would always present you know capitalism uh, in its crudest terms he is supplying arms to all sections all impo- important sections in the world so if, if france is fighting with spain then then, then he is giving you know arms to both france and and, and spain and if the there is a fight between the uh, poorer countries elsewhere and 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 england for instance then he would be supplying arms to all the people so wherever wherever there is a war this man becomes rich so imagine he is uh, uh, he is giving uh, he is uh, creating he is producing weapons of destruction and that destruction actually is making him richer and richer day by day that is under shaft and under shaft uh, understands uh, also uh, the nature of his wife that she is a fool and uh, that, that he will not uh, hand over his money to her or or to her children therefore he says you can't handle money like this money is a different ball game it it can't be contained within the family so uh, bretomar disagreed with him and turned him out but finally because he left uh, three children behind and now she has to settle them so she calls him and she says now please help these people to have their their their, their settlement at some level so th- this is how she has called her husband so he comes back and he point blank refuses to make them shareholders in the business what can he do he can give them any amount of money but once and for all for one one he can get them a job also he can get he, he can give money he can she, she wants money he says okay i'll give you this money then he says i have to marry off this daughter he says how much money do you need so he can give that money also so not that he is stingy but what he says is that business is business in in business uh, you see you, you can't have uh, business uh, at the level of the family family doesn't own business the business is uh, run by its own principles and therefore and the, the, that's where uh, the whole play actually is a kind of uh, very very great uh, uh, greatly appealing intellectual hoax it's a play you know, do you know what, what the theme of uh, uh, under shaft is under shaft says uh, i did not inherit any money from my family in fact he says i was a foundling no i i don't know my parents uh, I, i i was in an orphan, or, orphanage and from there i was picked up by a rich person and he gave all the money to me and the end the industry then i became under shaft under shaft actually is a brand name he says his other name would be different but he is called an under shaft because he was given this factory to run as an owner and now he says that he is becoming senior he is becoming old so he'll he'll give this uh, uh, factory uh, and its ownership not to his son or daughter no not to anybody except a another orphan so there has to be an orphan to become uh, eligible for owning this factory that 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 he has developed so much you know in, in the last so many years so it's a strange kind of logic how do you make of what what do you make of it i think what he's talking about what he was talking about is capitalism you can in capitalism there's no caste in capitalism there is no creed in capitalism there is no nation a capitalist can you know earn money from uh, one's own country and from another country and his uh, uh, loyalties are divided always uh, lo- loyalties are only business loyalties if something is helpful for him uh, he, and if, if crime is helpful if destruction is helpful if death is helpful then he can he can make he can use even even death crime uh, you know uh, all, all kinds of uh, faithlessness all these things he can do and his job is to uh you know uh produce uh, whatever is sold and whatever makes one rich so this is the capitalist philosophy and uh, the good part says bernard shaw once again also tongue in cheek the good part is that this is how the world is run the world is not run uh, with religious principles the world is not run through uh, with you know religious loyalties and uh, and all those things religious uh, and the customs and traditions and orthodoxy uh, countries are run economics is run 
by the principle of economics itself, profit and loss. So if you incur losses by being good, then your goodness is useless. So discard your goodness. Now this is the capitalist principle. So capitalism means uh, basically uh, criticizing all the things uh, uh, that, that are supposed to be good. So this is the uh, theme of the play. And uh, uh, finally what happens is that uh, uh, he is able to, uh, you know, uh, his, his daughter is, uh, uh, one, of the, one of his daughters uh, is uh, 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 Major Barbara. And he finds a solution finally to give money not to his daughter but to a foundling to a person who is, who is from the orphan orphanage if his daughter if his daughter marries that person from the orphan or orphanage then you know uh, that can be the next undershaft so here we have a professor of greek uh, you know who, who is who is also uh, in love with the barbara and uh, he, he he also didn't didn't have his parents uh, you know known uh, to anybody ex uh, even even to himself so he is, he is an orphan and uh, he is otherwise a very very understanding person very rich uh, very very uh, intelligent person and uh, he falls in love with uh, major barbara so undershaft thinks that he should be given all the all the factory ownership and uh, the, the, the uh, his daughter can marry him and there's a good bargain you know that finally the daughter also would be a shareholder so that's how the play ends and uh, bernard shaw is telling you that po poverty should be shunned poverty should not be uh, you know uh, put on a pedestal that it's, it's, it's absolutely nonsensical and wrong that the, the poorer you are, the, the, the dearer you are to God. That's the basic principle. So no religion, no custom, no orthodoxy, plain reality, plain realism and, and uh, accept capitalism and try to understand answers to capitalism from within itself than from religion. So this seems to be the final message of Bernard Shaw and the message definitely is a socialist message. And uh, it, is, it is coming from Bernard Shaw in the early part of the 20th century and it is uh, creating waves in, in the literary circles. And when Bernard Shaw cannot be answered by literary critics, finally they can close their eyes to him and they can stop talking about him. That's what happened in the case of Bernard Shaw, that uh, he was very popular in the uh, underdeveloped world at that time and he's still very popular uh, you know, among, among uh, socialist audiences wherever they are. And uh, he is uh, definitely a darling of the intellectuals because they, they can see, you know, that the man is uh, making great sense uh, with respect to the society uh, that he addresses. Therefore, his, 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 uh, he has a tradition and uh, Bernard, uh, Bernard Shaw will remain a legend uh, all the time because he is fighting actually, materially, against injustice and humbug. Thank you.